Okay, I cannot believe this, but I'm already back with another portable Clint. I've got somebody today, and I only have about 15 minutes with, but I'm trying to cover 61 years of this gentleman in the entertainment business. I was actually nervous last night thinking about interviewing this guy because this guy has always been a part of my life. Here he is, Barry Livingston. Look at that, look at this guy. Hey, hey, thank hey. you. Hey. Yeah. All for right, me. yeah. Thank you. Barry still Livingston. Here. Yeah, still here. Now, I don't know if you know this, but he was on a little show, hardly anybody ever watched it, called My Three Sons. I never watched it. So you never I watched it. I'm kidding. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. Everyone gets excited about it. Adam Sandler was a giant fan of the show. Adam, uh, I think, uh, no small part brought me on to You Don't Mess With the Zohan, his film mainly because he was a, a big fan of the movie and I, uh, I I hit him up one day at the lot uh, over at Sony and I said I'd love to be in one of your movies. Said, oh yeah sure sure man I'll put you in one of my movies. Yeah 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 of course. So he did. That's awesome man and see that's the same type of experience that I had because I watched it with my brothers, watched it with my family so I never remember part of my life that you weren't in it because you're like a comfort zone for people. There's like three shows. My Three Sons, Brady Bunch, Leave It to Beaver. Yeah, those maybe, are, maybe Lost in Space or no, oh, in a different, plenty, way, different yeah, way. No, yeah, but there's plenty of more, but those yeah, are the yeah. shows that my brothers and I yeah, watched yes. and we love, and we still will turn it on to MeTV and watch it because yeah. it's just comfortable. Yeah, that's true. You yeah, know, it, it is a bomb for people and uh, and for families who want to watch something with, uh, you know, with their kids hard to find a show that everyone can enjoy at the same time yeah so uh yeah it still it still does that for people okay i gotta cover 61 years in 15 minutes let's do it will you help me with that uh, i think we're halfway there right? okay good deal yeah <laughs> all right so here's the deal you do you remember your first audition for my three sons uh, the actual audition the part? actual audition i do but you know i had a kind of an inside edge because my brother stan was also already on the show so i was already uh you know a fixture on the set and but i was already working too i was on the ozzy and harry that's show, what so i was going to say I'm so like, they knew i was an actor uh and so it was kind of a no-brainer to sort of you know i got an aud i had to audition it wasn't like a gimme but but yeah it was you know sort of a one of those things I had to go in as a matter of courtesy to the producers right, and right. read to the, for the director, and then I got the part. Was when you went to go read for it? Is it the same setup that it is now? Um, yes, almost the same. You know, there's the waiting room, nervous stage where you're sitting out there looking over your your sides. Uh, they bring you into a room with a lot of grumpy looking, you know, stone faced people who sure. don't want to tell you what they're thinking. Oh, there was only one guy in the room who was the sweetest, wonderful guy, and because he was a child actor himself, a guy named Gene Reynolds. I don't know if Gene Reynolds means anything to you. But, Please let me know but, who that is. Gene, Gene was, uh, well, he did a movie with Errol Flynn, but Gene went on to have an incredible career as a producer-director. He was uh, he was our director on My Three Sons when I came, but then he went on to uh, work in the first four or five years of M.A.S.H., uh, created the show Lou Grant. Yeah, okay, uh, Room yeah, 22 yeah. was another one of his shows. But Gene was the one guy that I that I could look to, you know, among all these other statues sitting there. That Gene was a very sweet, warm man, and uh, and you know he was uh, the director. So he probably had a lot to do with hiring me. Now, when I first looked at your IMDb page, I saw that your brother had booked it, filmed how many years before you joined the set? Show came on in. 60 the pilot was shot in 59 and i came on in 63 okay as a friend next right door. so i was looking at your imdb and i said man he his brother had a gig three years prior to him yep. and then he, and, and then you came along but little did i know the reason why you weren't on that show at the very beginning because you were on another classic movie a, a, a classic tv show mm -hmm. ozzy it and hear it Harriet. You say it again? How do you say it? Ozzy, the adventures the, the, of Ozzy and right, Harriet. Right, the adventure right. was just going to the mall shop. Yes, that, yeah. that was the big day. No, you know, well, oddly enough, Stan, my brother Stan, was on the Ozzy and Harriet show as the kid next door that Ozzy would go to the mall shop with. And in fact, we did we did one episode where we, where we did appear together in, in one. So again, Ozzy, they were aware of me and I was already acting. So when Stan booked the gig on My Three Sons, I just kind of slid into the Ozzy and Harriet uh, show and did 16 episodes over three years uh, playing the kid, the friend next door. 
Let's back up for a second. Your parents, did, did you guys already live in Hollywood or did you guys move to Hollywood to try to put you guys in it? How, did, how was this working out? There was no grand out? plan. They came from Baltimore in 1949, I guess it was, maybe 1950. Uh, they were burlesque theater owners. My, oh. dad, my dad was. Uh, my mom was a stripper. Oh, wow, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. When, when stripping was just, you know, yeah, fan dancing. Sure, sure, yeah, Gypsy yeah. Rose Lee kind of, all that was, it was scandalous. Uh, but that, the the television industry ruined the movie business in the in the early 50s, late 40s. Everyone was, stopped going to the theaters. So, uh, so they sold them, came to California. No connections, you know, we just lucked into a... Uh, my brother lucked into a job. We used to go to a swim school up on Hollywood Boulevard, and a lot of directors, producers, casting people used to take their kids there. It was the baby boom in the 50s. They were all learning to swim. And my brother got a gig uh, on the Lassie show doing some double for you know, Timmy. For, for ten, yeah, for, for ten drowning for Timmy in a, in a pond. And that was, his, that was his first gig. And then from there, you know, we started auditioning and one thing led to another, and here we are. Okay, so you finish. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of fast track a little, little thing. So, my three sons, you it, that ends. How many years did you do of that again? You, you uh, I did eight years. Eight years. After eight years, how old were you when it ended? 102 years old. Okay. I was very, very, I looked young for my age. Okay. Uh, uh, I was, let's see, I was 18. I was 18 years old, so I was, you know, got my money that they set aside for you. Uh, and I was out the door and on my own living in Hollywood. And uh, Did you, you know? still want to be an actor or were you done with it because no. you just came off of a show I, that long? I pretty much had decided yeah. to give that a real full-fledged try to see if I could, although everyone was going, you know, there's the stigma of being on a TV series and, you know, good luck because a uh, child actor trying to transition. It's to tough, adult. man. Yeah, but I, you know, very quickly, my very first gig after that, I booked a really sweet thing on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Uh, it was a musical called You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. I want to talk to you about that. And, I saw uh, that you were a voice on that. Well, I wasn't just a voice. You're, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown was an off-Broadway musical. And so I, you, I didn't know that. You, you physically, I was Linus, you know. I mean, they had actors portraying portraying the characters and, and song and dad and sing and dance and singing, you know, with the group and the harmonies and all that. So uh, it was the first really, you know, right, I think it was 1973. The show went off in 71, I guess, 72. We stopped filming in 71. Uh, but yeah, so it, it was it was encouraging that to see that I could get, book a pretty prestigious gig right out the gate. Uh, but then I, you know, decided to study acting and, and work with people like Martin Landau. And, so you were still Harper. studying acting, you were still studying acting, even though you were already established. You, you always wanted to better yourself. Well, you, you yeah. You didn't get lazy and go, I, I mean, don't need to. I, I, I kind of figured out that I didn't know everything, and uh, you can go only so far on intuition and your good looks, <laughs> such as they were when I was a kid, because I was pretty ragged. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was the smart thing to do. And er the advice that I was getting is learn your craft. Um, you know, people, Roddy McDowell, who was a fan, you know, fabulous child star actor. I did a, a TV movie with him called The Elevator, which is a great movie, actually. And uh, I said, what did you do? He said, well, I went to New York. You know, I studied acting uh, in New York. And so I, I took that to heart. You know, I, I did a lot of work after My Three Sons here. I did another series back called Sons and Daughters. Uh, and after that ended, did, wait, I decided that, that, to go to New York. Did that have anything to do with My Three Sons? Because no, I just noticed nothing. that Sons no. was in the title. No, no, nothing at all. It was 1950s, very dramatic, almost like a, a you know, soap opera-esque. Uh, but it was uh, on for a season, CBS. I was one of the stars of the show. Um, and it, it was a great run, you know? I mean, it was fun. I'm going to go, I'm going to ask this question. If my, if my question that I ask myself all the time is, am I ever going to really make it? You have already made it a couple of times. What are, What is your thought at night? Like, what do you think about about this business? Uh, I'm not done, so I'm always thinking about the next job. Of course, I'm I'm thinking about will I qualify for my health care next year? Well, yeah, that's a I big get, fear. Can I get unemployment if I need it? Uh, all of the actors' issues that unless you're Brad Pitt and making twenty nine million dollars per picture, uh, you have to consider. Because I've always been a journeyman and working actor, um, you know, and I've done nothing but act. Well, that's what I'm going to ask you. I was going to ask so, you that. Have you ever had to get a side job your whole entire life? Never. No. Have you ever almost had to? Like, man, yes. I'm going to... 
course. Yes. Tell me about that time, please. Um, not much was happening in the way of work, which was probably the late 70s or early 80s. But I was doing theater, and I was getting paid well. I was doing dinner theater, uh, traveling around the country. But nothing, nothing, uh, you know, of the magnitude of TV or films. And, uh, you know, I, uh, my, my plan B, my fallback, I started making some uh, tables, <laughs> which, which I was completely out of my league and trying to, as a carpenter, but I realized very quickly I don't know how to make tables and sell them at swap meets or whatever I was going to do with them. So they're still in my house, actually. Oh, okay. I still wow, have the, wow. the four or five that I made, <laughs> okay. and that's it. <laughs> okay, so I got I to gotta go back to my three sons. Because my brother, Nolan, specifically wanted me to ask you a question. Can you give me one kind of cool story about Bub? Well, he was, you know, a renowned uh, drinker. Bub was on My Three Sons. The was he the first male nanny on television? I don't know. Bachelor Father had, I think, James Wong. That might have been uh, prior to My Three Sons. Um, it, it's... It's a question I can't. I okay, know. that's I, fine. Not, that's not fine. A I, just because of I, nannies on TV. When I funny. realized he was a nanny, I'm like, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen another male nanny before him. Well, the gig on My Three Sons was it was an all male household. That was the novelty part of that show. Where if there was anything truly unique about My Three Sons in 1960, it was a single parent. That was there, there had been a couple shows like that, but it was an all male household. There was no women to sort of temper the, the madness, and they, you know, such as it was, the idea was let's make this a totally you know wild, out of control. You have dogs sleeping on the sofa, kids jumping over the banister, you know, uh, people actually do dishes. Uh, those were all kind of, strangely enough revolutionary touches. Not wow. you know, the whole show was had its own vibe. But just the color of the show was, you know, was was going to be trying to show a house as it probably really could have been, should have been, where, you know, beds are being made and yeah. socks are being fixed. And, yeah, you know, that's and, cool, man. And I didn't even realize that. Bub was darning socks, but, you know, the guy couldn't, couldn't, <laughs> couldn't sober his, <laughs> his life, but he faked it. Uh, you know, those are the ideas that they had. Okay, so back to the question about Bub. Can you give me a... The bum. Uh, well, he, um, you know, our job, uh, because he was, uh, he liked to drink at lunch, and in those days, you really, you know, it was the, all the restaurants and all of the places servicing the studios. What was his drink? He was uh, Cuddy Sark on the rocks. Cuddy Did Sark. you always see a bottle around in like his trailer and stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it was not hidden? It was... No, 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 and everyone knew he was, but our job, this was our, our job because he would be very grouchy. He didn't want to go back to work after he finished lunch. <laughs> so so he was feeling pretty good. I mean, good. who does, right? No, nobody does. Yeah. So we'd break at one, around one, four. They couldn't get anybody to get him back to work on time except for my brother and I. The production manager actually said to us, he said, look, we really need you guys to help us out here. Because he won't, if we send somebody, a, a, you know, a PA, somebody, a production assistant to come over and try to remind him to come back to work, he, you know, he'd you know, shower them with, a, with four letter words, uh, you know, uh, so we would be, we, we're, we're tasked with the job of going, come on, Uncle Bill, come on, Uncle Bill, hey, oh man, we got to get back to work, look, look, look at the clock, look at the clock, was, oh, I don't want to go yet, no, 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 we got to go, come on, let's go, oh, oh okay, okay, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever, okay, all right. Yeah, so we that was that was a, a great great memory with, with him. Well, I mean, I, just go quickly over Fred McMurray. I mean, you have so many legend legends that you worked with. I mean, it's just so much. But Fred, you told me uh, when I hung out with you, I actually worked with him on a television show called uh, Trial and Error. Error, and it's really cool because I've always seen Barry when I came into town 32 years ago. I would see him at auditions, and I could go up to anyone at any audition, but when you mean something to me, I was in awe of you, so I never approached you. But well, you, most but people you, are in awe of me. Yeah, yeah. But, but you were always on my radar. Yeah, and I then, get it. And then the cool thing happened, you and I were on the same set together. We did all, I know we did five episodes each. We yeah. did like maybe three together. Mm -hmm. And I would just always ask you questions. I remember you were sitting down having lunch by yourself. I'm going, I'm going in and I asked you some questions. And yeah, you were yeah, always I don't nice. like eating alone. So yeah, <laughs> so it was really neat. We were sitting at a table at Warner Brothers Studios mm -hmm. and just shooting, the, you know, just talking, yeah. Yeah. talking shop. And I loved every minute of it, just like I am right now. 
So I heard you told me that Fred would shoot all of his stuff at the beginning of the season. Right, right. Well, it was a, a technique that they devised to lure a big star like McMurray. You know, back in, in 1960, big movie stars didn't do TV. If they did, it was a very kind of cameo on the Bob Hope show and something, you know, it was, it was very selective. But to jump in full time to a TV series, but Fred had had just adopted a couple girls, and he was, you know, transitioning in his career as a film star. And he just said, "I, you know, I want to be at home more. I don't want to be be working so hard." So they uh, devised the system to to shoot all of his scenes and all of his close-ups just right in a row. You know, you'd work out of ten scripts a day. You'd work on, you know, just master shots with Fred in it, and they'd go in and get his close-up skip all the, 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 the connecting, matching close-ups. And then he would be there about six, seven weeks doing that, and then he would leave. And then we would film all of the other scenes in every episode that he wasn't in, and get as much close-ups. And then at the end of the year, he'd come back for about two weeks, tie up loose ends. So that's how they got, you know, that's how they got Fred involved. Have you ever heard of that format for anyone else? Never. Oh yeah, well actually they did that, and once it was shown that you could actually do this, the producer, Don Federson, then did at least two other shows. Got Brian Keith to do Family Affair with right, the same right, deal. Right, right, right. Uh, John Forsythe did a show called To Rome With Love. And then they did a pilot with Henry Fonda. Actually, Ron Howard was in it, uh, called The Smith Family. Didn't didn't do well, didn't last. But he did, you know, he, he used that template to, to get big stars, big movie stars to do TV. Who are some of the actors that you have on your phone right now that you could call up? I mean, we're, we're not going to do that. I'm Robert just Peters. Okay, okay, Bobby Peters. Okay, but give like you, I know you're friends with Tony Dow. Tony. Uh, Tony yeah. Dow from Leave It to Beaver. Just get, name me like three if you don't mind. Uh, Steve Railsback, who's a great friend of mine, who played Manson in, in Helter Skelter and the Stunt Man. Uh, oh yeah, great actor. Um, most of my friends are not mega names well, but that you would you know even what? know. But you um, say that, but you know, I follow you on Facebook and you always like, you're, you're having these cool parties with these old Hollywood legends and I right. just love it. I love it. Right. Well, I could lie and say I've got Leonardo DiCaprio well, on I know. speed dial here, but yeah. I, I okay. really don't. What is some of the best advice that you've learned over the years about getting through Hollywood during the tough times? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it was helpful for me to have my brother, who was also on the show, sort of go through a similar rejection period, if you want to call it that, but certainly transitioning. But it's just to keep busy, to keep, to keep, you know, not lose hope, to keep, you know, nothing's happening, go do theater, um, you know, uh, try to put your own projects together, uh, write. Uh, those were all the things that I tried to do, you know, when things got slower and uh, just kept my head in the right place so I, you know, wasn't getting depressed. <laughs> I've never heard anything bad about you, you know, like, I'm not saying, I'm not going to get into anything, but I've never heard Don't it. dig, don't dig too deep. Okay, I'm not going to dig too <laughs> Okay, but man, I cannot believe you did this. I appreciate this so much. And is there anything else that we can end with that, like a feather in your cap that you just want to say, okay, I, I tell you what, here it is. If you, when you die 50 years from now, mm -hmm. and they say you can take one Hollywood thought with you, <laughs> what would that Hollywood thought be? It was fun. It, it was? It was fun. It was very gratifying. And look, you go through life, what, what a gift. You know, I could go through life as a grave digger, street sweeper, nothing wrong with any of those professions. But I was gifted with a, uh, a profession where people are happy to see you, absolute strangers. Come up to you and are, 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 are you know will invite you home to spend the night and feed you you know that's an amazing it's an amazing thing in the larger scope yeah, of life it is. and how mean mean it can be sometimes too how so, many wonderful. how many times do you hear the word earning a day in my head or just in real life just in real life <laughs> well well that, that's a great question okay and i never hear it in my head okay good and i rarely hear it in real life anymore i i transitioned into more of an adult career because i don't look like ernie well, no but that's anymore. just it i want to say that you have worked non-stop yeah. that's the reason why i told you at the very beginning i don't want to focus on my three sons because you've literally worked for 61 years in this business you don't right. and it's just not that one thing about you i mean that's what a lot of actors are they have that one thing they kind of rely on that one thing and they don't do anything more you have always yeah. you did heart to heart Oh my God, heart to heart. Yeah. <laughs> Simon and Sa I did Simon all these shows Simon. with two names of heart to heart. I love that. Simon, Doogie Howser, 
um, MD, I was on everything, Lois and Clark. You know, and recently I just came back from Mexico City where I did Narcos Mexico, which is a great thing, and I'm on Bosch. Uh, from Dick Van Dyke great. to Bosch? From Dick Van Dyke to Bosch. There is a there is a through line there. Uh, Who? A very, very curvy line, but yes. Do you Are you in awe of any actor? Because you were grown up around it. Do you Are you in awe of anyone in this business? Uh, you know, people like Daniel Day-Lewis, I'm in awe of, uh, you know, uh, James McAvoy is pretty pretty special, you know, their their ability to morph into different people. Um, yeah, I mean those are those are the giants, but everybody's in awe of them too. So uh, I'm in awe of people too that just stick to it, you know. I'm in awe, I'm in awe of people that that even when it gets slow, uh, they they know that this is their calling and they this is what they want to do with their lives and it's tough. But you know, I, I'm quite awe of people who and then to see some people break through and continue to work, great, you know. You've seen a lot of people become famous over the years. Yes. Yes. Do you, last question, I say last question, you see child actors now, do you kind of see like that kid's going to be okay, that kid's going to be trouble? Well, oddly enough, I mentioned Doogie Howser, which I was, I, I consider that my very first adult role, transitioning from a younger man into an older actor, because I played a doctor, who was a specialist, and I remember working with Neil Patrick Harris, and he was, you know, and he was trying to find out what he was going to do at this point in his life. And I remember passing on the the uh, advice that Roddy McDowell gave me. I said, go to New York, you know, get out of L.A., get out of this world here, find find yourself in a, in a different environment, and, and learn your craft. So I'm not taking credit for his success, but he did do that. Yeah, yeah. Probably a lot of people were telling him to do that. But, uh... Yes, you know, it was, it was one of those kind of handing off the baton to somebody else, but I, in my mind. Uh, so, yeah, you know, he was famous and went on to become even more famous. Well, Barry, you and I have the same audition later on. <laughs> I mean, it's not for the same part, but yeah. I just love the fact that... And we both, yeah, they are cool hats, Yeah, we too. have cool hats. Look at this yeah. guy. I got the glasses, though, so... Well, Barry, I am so honored to call you a friend of mine because... Don't you know, do that. Please well, don't. I know, right? Hey, you've crossed the line. I did? Dang yeah, it. Sorry. I say friend. I say, you know, <laughs> a, 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 you know, we know each other. And, that, yes. and, I, and I dig that. I admire you as one of my fellow character actors out there that, there I, that I have to beat out at Well, yeah, same here. All the time. Yeah, that's how I feel I like... Go, oh, Clint, come to the room. <laughs> Jeez. That's how I feel about you. I gotta bring my double A game now because yeah. he's good. Okay, can you tell everybody goodbye for me? Adios. <laughs>